Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk a little bit about XRP and we're going to talk about everything else that's going on and the news around crypto as well. I try to bring you all the crypto news. So companies without a crypto wallet will be left behind. This comes from Bluehawk Legend. What they're saying is for Web2 businesses trying to bridge that gap, the spark they're missing is the Web3 wallet that will connect their app with all the functionalities on the other side. Until they reach out and forge that connection, they will remain isolated from everything that lies beyond. It's just a crypto wallet another way for your customers to pay but it's also everything you know the banks the traditional banks are starting to ship they want to get their customers a, a digital wallet all of a sudden they want to do away with debit cards and have just digital wallets i think this transformation is going to pick up a lot of momentum early 2025 because this is the path forward in the digital age. And, you know, these traditional banks, they already see what's coming. They want to get ahead of it. This way they get the upper hand on the competition, the competing bank down the street. This is huge for crypto in the USA. In record time, the judge in her FDIC Gov Freedom of Information Act case has ordered the agency to produce the Operation Choke Point 2.0 pause letters. We appreciate the court's consideration. Some much needed sunlight is on its way. Now, I like the idea of this, but it because it's the U.S. government, most likely this will also be drug out into 2025. But there needs to be a pause on Operation Choke Point 2.0. The FDIC, I was actually a little bit surprised but not really surprised that they were also playing a major part in debanking people and keeping banks out of crypto. Anderson Horowitz is already spending big on the 2026 midterms. You take notice, everybody's already throwing money at the 2026 midterms because we need to get pro-crypto politicians in Washington because they make the laws. Congress makes the laws in the United States. you got to have pro-crypto politicians in Congress. And they're putting in another $23 million in additional funds to fair shake and affiliated PACs for the 2026 midterm election cycle. You know, we didn't even get through the 2024 election yet. And people are already looking ahead. And you gotta, because if you don't, all of a sudden you get some anti-crypto politicians there and nothing will get done. This will drag out into 2028 and beyond. Treasury Advisory Committee calls for CBDCs to replace stablecoins. I don't know if the Treasury is just stupid or what, but all a CBDC is, is a stablecoin issued by the U.S. government. There's no difference between a stablecoin issued by the U.S. government and a CBDC. Janet Yellen even said, we have to make tokenization more centralized. They want to take control over tokenized assets as well. But we are going to have a central bank digital currency in the United States. Every other country is already pushing in this direction. If the U.S. doesn't go in this direction, we will be left behind the rest of the world. U.S. Treasury has temporarily lifted sanctions on Russian banks so that U.S. companies can import commodities from Russia. Yeah, it's getting that bad. I tried to find more proof of this, and I couldn't find it. And King Valix even said, you people don't know what you're talking about. This was literally five days ago. Stop making shit up. More sanctions are coming, especially in 2025, 
as well you people are delusional. Treasury takes aim at third country sanctions, evaders, and Russian producers supporting Russia's military industrial base. We are going to see more sanctions on Russia. And the reason I think the U.S. is doing that is because every time they put sanctions on Russia, Russia pushes deeper into the digital age. They start to fast track even more towards a CBDC. And we're going to watch that happen again. I honestly think the U.S. and the BRICS are all working together to push towards the digital age. Why would you put sanctions on a country that you already know every time you've done it in the past, it only made them fast track unless you weren't ready for the digital age already. I think the U.S. is already ready with a digital dollar. They're just waiting for the crisis to happen first. BRICS pay. The list of members of the consortium, institutions, and banks is kept private. BRICS Pay uses a decentralized network of node operators by this consortium. So it looks like the BRICS, they're building out, but they're keeping the institutions and banks that they're working with private. And I still think Ripple is tied in there. It makes sense. Think about it. Ripple has rails in all of the core BRICS countries already. And every country that wants to join the BRICS also has Ripple Rails. And even if sanctions are in place, they can still utilize the XRP ledger and XRP. Anybody can use the ledger and XRP. People keep saying it's sanctions that's gonna keep Ripple and XRP out of the BRICS. That sanctions don't even matter when it comes to the XRP ledger. Putin calls the dollar the worst most the world's most important currency when other currencies are valued against the US dollar they're tied to the decisions of the Federal Reserve and this is why countries are pushing away from the US dollar they want a level playing field they want to have their own currency people are tired of the US dollar being the world's reserve currency. The world is ready for a world's bridge currency, XRP. It works as a trust layer in between two countries. It levels the playing field. It doesn't compete with a country's own currency. It's the best path forward, honestly. But you know, he's not wrong. And the world is sick of the U.S. dollar and the U.S. weaponizing the dollar against other countries. America's out-of-control debt is a national security threat. Judy Shelton on gold and global peace. Now, she's pushing for a gold-backed currency. She thinks the U.S. is going to have a gold-backed dollar very soon. But she's not wrong. The, U, the debt that we are carrying is a national security threat. And they keep adding to that debt. They're not slowing down on spending at all. And if you look at it, all they're doing is stretching out the dollar as long as they possibly can. But a crisis is going to come. And then all of a sudden, they're going to have the solution. A stable coin, CBDC, whatever you want to call it, is going to be the solution. World Bank has allegedly lost track of $24 billion as Insider warns bank records routinely are made up. And you see it right here. All the figures are routinely made up. Nobody has a clue about who spends what. So they want all these countries to keep putting money in to this climate change agenda. They want them to say, well, you got to spend money to fight climate change. But yet, they don't know how much money they're bringing in. They don't know where the money is going. And people are most likely walking away and just spending this money. The bank is quick to brag about its climate finance billions. But these numbers are based on what it plans to spend, not on what it actually spends 
once a project gets rolling. This is like asking your doctor to assess your diet only by looking at your grocery list without ever checking what actually ends up in your fridge. You, you see what I mean? They don't know how much money they're spending. And just wait until carbon credits come. And that's just going to be another tax on people. You're going to have to pay the carbon tax to go on vacation. You're going to have to pay the carbon tax to drive your gas-powered vehicle or to cut your grass with a gas-powered lawnmower. You know, this is all about making them rich and keeping us poor. Elon, I'm the largest individual taxpayer in history, and people claim he doesn't love America. That's nuts. Take a listen to what he says here. I'm the, 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 I'm the largest individual taxpayer in history. So I, I paid $10 billion in tax, over $10 billion in tax. Thank you. You're welcome. Like, I, I, I sort of thought maybe the IRS would like, you know, send me like a little trophy or something. You know? <laughs> Yeah, and like one of those, like, doesn't have to be expensive. It could be like, you know, one of those, like, like things you get for when kids win a karate competition. <laughs> like little plastic gold trophy or something like that, or a, or a cookie or something. But I didn't get anything. It's like, you know, and. Uh... If anybody wants to see the IRS be gone, do away with the IRS, it is most likely Elon Musk. I mean, think about it. You go to work. They tax your paycheck. You spend the money. They tax again. Every time you turn around, you are paying a tax on the money that you earn. And, you know, once we get rid of the IRS and the Fed, do you know how great this country would actually be? Do you know how many people would come here just to build things in the United States if we didn't have the IRS or the Fed? People always said, you know, well, you need the IRS. You got to pay those taxes because they're going to fix the roads. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. But then they go and they spend your money overseas in other countries. You know, if people didn't have to pay taxes, they would be fixing up their houses. You know, all of a sudden you'd have people opening new businesses in this country overnight. This would happen. Do you know how many jobs would be created if people didn't have to pay taxes? That's the path forward for the United States. Get rid of the Fed and the IRS. Breaking news. The U.S. economy lost over 28,000 private jobs in October of 2024, which is the first loss since December 2020. Also, the worst part is private sector jobs have dropped off by 1.5 million in the past year. We are now in the late stages of an incoming recession. Everybody sees the, it coming for 2025, yet there's so many people in denial. And at the same time, they want the Fed to lower rates again. You know, we are going into probably one of the worst years. We are going to have a massive crash. But if you're a crypto investor, you're going to make a lot of money when this happens. Because if you look at the DXY back in 2008, the DXY was plummeting down. And whenever the DXY plummets down, crypto takes off. We see it every single time. We didn't have crypto back in 08 to go off of. You know, if Bitcoin was around in 08 or XRP was around in 08, most likely we would have had a blow off top for crypto when the crash happened. And I expect this crash to be much worse than 08. But I think it's going to reset a lot of things. I think rent is going to be coming down. I think people's mortgages are going to change. I think a lot of things are going to get revalued and things are going to turn around very fast. But this also could be what pushes us into the digital age. That could be their answer to the crash. World Economic Forum video discusses using video games as a propaganda tool for persuading people to see big challenges that we face including the global economy, climate change, and energy in a different way. 
Games are good for persuading people to see the world in a different way. How can video games become the next persuasive medium for addressing complex social issues? So the World Economic Forum wants to use video games as a propaganda tool. Remember, they also want to have their own economy and their own government inside of the metaverse. I don't like the idea of this at all. And they're going to be pushing their agenda to young kids that are playing these video games, getting the next generation ready for what comes next. I am not a fan of this in any way. In fact, going forward, I don't know if it's even going to be a good idea to allow kids to play video games when the World Economic Forum is involved. But, you know, we are crypto investors. I'm preparing for 2025. I think it's going to be a very rough year. I think a lot of people in crypto are going to emerge out of it as very wealthy when it happens. I think people are going to all of a sudden have wealth that they could have only dreamed of, you know, over the past couple of years. And it's going to be sudden. And if you're planning to cash out crypto, definitely have a game plan. You don't want to blow through the money and end up back here chasing the next big thing. You don't want to be buying back into XRP because I think once XRP breaks above a dollar this time around, it's never going under a dollar ever again. This is your shot right now. People in the coming years are going to look at you as a legend for buying XRP under a dollar. That's the point we are at right now. But I always try to prepare you based on real world events that are playing out as well. Because if you look at everything that's happening, you could see what's coming. But you know, until it all happens, also stay patient, stay positive, and let's get rich together. With that said, I'm gonna wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.